We'll continue talking about the thief of unbelief today. You don't want to miss it. The program you're about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled, You Have the Spirit of Faith. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are coming to the end of our series, You Have the Spirit of Faith. And I hope you've been encouraged by the teaching. I know I have. I've been feeding on this material for months now, and it has really made a difference. I, we've got to walk by faith in these days as believers. Uh, that's what we do. And if we're not really walking by faith and not by sight, uh, the things in <laughs> this world today will get under your skin. If you've found yourself agitated and unsettled and unhappy and uh, maybe worried and concerned and anxious, uh, you just need to walk by faith. You need to get into the Word of God and let that begin to be you know your sense you get your sense of assurance and confidence from the word that won't change god's news is good news and there is no shortage of good news in the world today it just doesn't get as much coverage you need to watch this program where we will focus on the good news and you know i have on purpose stayed out of uh, politics that doesn't mean that i won't ever weigh in but i feel like we get plenty of input uh, and perspectives and people seem to be so angry emotions are so high on all sides and uh, I, I do I definitely have views and strong I take a strong stand for life and and for scriptural principles but uh, I, I just feel like people need somewhere to go where nobody's lecturing them in those areas that you, you just get fed and built up. You know, if we can change the hearts, that'll change the minds. And if, if all we're trying to do is change everyone's mind, everyone's mental or intellectual take on the world and the government, then we're fighting a battle that really we're not, we're supposed to be winning hearts. <laughs> and I want to feed people, get the word of God in them and let the light shine and then they can see things clearly. If you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to help somebody who's blind see a masterpiece, that's a big task. I don't, that's not really going to work until you heal the blindness. And uh, the Word of God illuminates. The, the Spirit of God is our teacher. And so up until now, I mean, if I had a bigger platform, I'm, I would be more responsible probably to do more and do other things but um up until now i i feel like people need to be encouraged you need your faith to be fed and and i want you to come to the good news program and know what you're going to get it's a safe place a place where where you can hear uh truth as, as clearly as i can make it known and it has been a, pre a privilege to be able to come to you and take these truths that i've known for some of these truths that i teach you i've known for 40 years and uh, I've taught them over and over and over again. They work. I leave away the. I leave out the fluff. I leave out the gimmicks. I leave out all that, and and we just get down to the truth of God's word. And I still believe that there's a hunger out there for God's word. You know, John Osteen used to say this. Uh, uh, he had a, ch a church in a in a feed store in Houston. It was very small, but people would drive from all over to go to church and it grew until you know now his son Joel Osteen has the church but he used to make this statement he said if you serve good food people are going to come and eat and that's what I'm trying to do and I trust if people would drive across Houston to go meet in a feed store that people will find out about the good news program they'll find ways to get it and we've made it available I mean we're on YouTube we're on we have clips on Facebook uh, I have streaming available on my website. We're on internet TV. We're out there. And I believe people are going to find it if we'll just continue to put out the good news, not the bad news. There's plenty of outlets for that. <laughs> but the outlets, have you noticed? The outlets for good news are few and far between. All right, I want to take you to James chapter 1. Get the study notes 
Go to my website for the, in the free download section and find You Have the Spirit of Faith and stream it. Get all these episodes and you can, you can uh, have your faith fed because uh, we're getting to the end and uh, I don't want you to miss any of it. You can get it all on our website. James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given. But let him ask in faith with no what? Doubting. So important. He who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. And that's what doubt will do for you. You know, faith, Bible faith is believing the Bible promises, believing scriptures, believing the promises of God. Those promises do not change. <laughs> the truth doesn't have to be updated. It doesn't have to be conformed or molded. It cannot be. It is what it is, and it never changes. Doubt can take so many different forms because there's no standard for doubt. You can doubt anything. I mean, doubt can come in, in, in one form today and a totally different form tomorrow. You know, I was going to have, I, I, I hesitate to share this with you, but I was going to have sh shoulder surgery and I have never, ever been concerned or afraid or, you know, that's just not p part of what, what makes me tick. But I was having surgery, and uh, it was some things that needed to be repaired in my shoulder. Not major, but, but uh, I needed some, some to, to get it tweaked. And so I was going to have this surgery, and I started having these thoughts. Why, they're going to mess your shoulder. It's going to be worse. It's not going to heal. It's going to be terrible. It's going to fall off. You're not going to have a shoulder. It's going to be all messed up. You don't want to get this done. And, and I thought, wow, that's, that's odd. I'm never really alarmed about things, you know. And then I start having these thoughts. They're going to put you to sleep. They're going to put you under anesthesia. And you're not going to wake up. You're going to die. You're never going to wake up. You're going to die with this shirt. Uh, and, I, and I thought, you know, they can't both happen. I, I mean, if they ruin my shoulder and I die, it's not going to make any difference. And then I realized that's just doubt and unbelief. That's just the enemy. It, they can't both happen. It, it can't all I mean, When you're concerned about something today and tomorrow you're concerned about something totally different and the next day you're concerned about totally different, you're falling for the traps of the enemy. All he's trying to do is, is, is keep you occupied. You know, that's how the doomsday scenario works. You know, when I was a kid, the ozone hole was going to kill us all. And then now it's global warming. It's going to heat the earth. And then the ice is going to melt. And then, and then the water level is going to. So I can't figure out if global warming is going to burn us alive or drown us. You know, and, and that's kind of how the enemy works. It's like whatever you believe, whatever's going to work the most fear, the most concern, that's what he's going to tell you. Let's just quit falling for this. It's too important to believe God. Now, if we didn't have anything else to do in life other than worry, then fine, you know, take your pick. Man, if you, if you just wanted to go into full-time worry, there are so many options. I mean, you can just be so occupied. But we've got something better to do with our life. We've got something to believe in. You know, the world is looking for something to believe in, and we've already got it. We should take the Word of God seriously and say, you know what, I don't have time for doubt and unbelief. It limits. It's a thief. It's robbing me from the good things that God has for me. So although, you know, people may enjoy it, I don't know how, that, that, that may be part of their habit and part of their experience in life, it's a luxury, if you want to call it that, that we should not afford. We should not give in to that. Because anytime you're worried about something, anytime something negative is dominating your thoughts, then you're not believing in that area. And, and, and consequently, you're limiting what God can do for you in that area of your life. So uh, we need to recognize the danger, the, 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 the limitations that unbelief puts on us. I, I didn't finish this. I need to finish James 1 verse 6. Let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. So doubt takes, can take any form. Truth can't be like a wave of the sea. Truth is a rock. 
It's solid. It cannot change. All right. Verse 7, let not that man, what man? The one who doubts. So you can pray the right prayer, but if you pray it in doubt, it won't work. Let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, and he's unstable in all his ways. So, you know, you just can't say it any better than that. If a person is going to doubt and they're going to give in to circumstances or anything, here's the way we define doubt. Doubt is not the absence of belief. Doubt is believing anything that's contrary to the promise of God. So a person who doubts is believing something else. And if that's how you go into prayer, it's not going to work. If, if you believe your symptoms are greater than the promise of God for your healing, then you can pray, but your prayer is not going to work because you're driven. You're moved by something other than the promise of God. And so he says, let not that man suppose he'll receive anything. We're talking about the thief of unbelief. And here you can see how doubt can ruin your prayers. Unbelief can ruin your prayers. And, and, and that, that's, that means, again, you could be praying the right thing, but if you do it in doubt, and that's why when I had healing meetings, a lot of healing meetings, uh, I was practicing. I was kind of working with things to see what worked and what, what worked better. And one of the things that, that we told them was, you need to slow down. You don't need to be, have a healing meeting starting on Sunday morning and get prayed for Sunday morning. Just come and listen. Come and, and, and listen to the word on healing. Read some material on healing. And get the scriptures working in your life. Why? So that when we pray, we're praying in faith. The prayer itself is not magical. It doesn't do the job. It's the faith in your heart that causes the prayer to be effective. Now, we, we covered thoroughly the fact that God hears you when you pray. So there's never a time that you pray and God wasn't paying attention or he was distracted. That doesn't happen. But the, the, the fact of the matter is you can pray too quickly and because bef let's just break it down. Before you get to the place of faith, you have a desire to, to be healed or to have this answer. Take the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. The Bible says that she spent all that she had on physicians. And, and, and that she was not any better, but rather grew worse. What that shows is that's not faith, but there's certainly a desire there to be healed. So you have the desire first. She had the desire to be healed. She just didn't know how to get healed. But the hope was there that it would happen someday. And the desire was there. To, and, and, it, and, it, and it motivated her to spend her money on doctors, to spend her money on cures that didn't work to take her time and effort to try this and try that and try that but there's no faith there so there, there are people who are at that stage they want an answer they want their life to change but they're still in the stage of hoping and desiring it to happen and, and as good as that is that's not faith faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and, and if you rush it and try to pray the prayer of faith before you've entered into that phase of faith, it's not going to work. That's what James is saying. He says, let not that man that prays in doubt suppose he'll receive anything from God. You've got to prepare yourself for the long haul. You've got to prepare yourself for that prayer and the attack that's going to come after that prayer and prepare yourself to stand the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit that once I pray and make this de declaration of faith, I'm not moving. I'm not going to step back. I'm going to stand my ground. So this woman had the desire to be healed. She had the hope of healing, but hope's not faith. Then in the Bible says, when she heard of Jesus, well, there, there is where faith comes. She heard of Jesus. She said, if I can touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. I love this story because it is a lesson in faith. She had the desire and the hope. She was doing all she knew to do. But then when she heard of Jesus, now she has something to believe in. She, she began to believe that Jesus could heal her. 
She must have heard that he was healing people. She must have heard that he was a, a, a miracle worker. She must have heard that he was the son of God and that he could do anything. Because when she heard of Jesus, she's already desiring something. She already had the hope. But boy, when she heard of Jesus, it gave her something to put her faith in and put her faith on. And she began to say, I love what the Amplified Bible says. It says, she kept saying, if I may touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. And that is a picture of faith. People need to speak the word of God and keep saying it. Uh, faith may not be apparent. It may not be manifested. It may not be developed enough when you say it the first time. You know, your confession is not some automatic trigger. It's, it's the beginning of faith. It's how faith builds and how faith works and it's how faith is released. And, it, and you might need to say it for a while. And I, I would have people do that in my healing meetings. And, and I took this example, the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. I would tell them, I'm not going to pray for you. I'm not going to lay hands on people until Tuesday night. And it was Sunday. I said, I'm not going to pray for anybody until Tuesday night. Tuesday night, we're going to lay hands on the sick and we're going to have a healing line. But until then, I'm going to preach on healing. They're going to hear. They're going to hear. And then I'd have them say, I would say, now say this with me. If you need prayer, if you need healing in your body, I want you to plan to come on Tuesday night. But today, Sunday, say this, on Tuesday night, when hands are laid on me, I'm going to receive my miracle. I said, say it, and they'd say it with me. I said, now say it all day long. When you, when you leave church, say it. They'd come back Sunday night. We'd do the same thing. I'd preach on healing. They'd hear the healing message. And I'd say, now you say this. On Tuesday night, when the preacher lays hands on me, I'm going to receive my healing. According to whatever, you know, 1 Peter 2, 24, Matthew 8, 17, and, and Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. I would have them begin to say what was going to happen, just like this woman did, and keep saying it. And I found that by Tuesday night, the place was filled with expectancy, not just emotion. There's a difference. It was like electricity was in the air. You could sense the faith in the people. You know, in Acts 14, when Paul was preaching and he perceived that that lame man had faith to be healed, I've perceived that before. You see it. You see it in their eyes. They, by the time they get to Tuesday night, they're ready to receive. Now, you say, well, 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 that's faith, but what is unbelief? Unbelief is Sunday morning when they first come. And you say, I'm going to talk about healing. And they're like, boy, I sure need healing. I have had such, a tr such trouble with this physical ailment. And I've been prayed for a hundred times, and it's never worked. I hope you can do something. Maybe you can pray for me and fix me. That's really not faith, but that's where a lot of people are. They've had prayer after prayer after prayer. And can I just quote the Bible? I'm not, I'm not uh, condemning anybody, but let me just say what the Bible says. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. Boy, if it was up to me, I wouldn't let anybody in my prayer line that was doubting. I don't want to pray for another person that's doubting. Why? Because it's not going to work. The Bible said so. So we need to take time to get in faith. We need to identify unbelief. Man, if you pray for somebody and they don't get healed and they leave saying, I knew that wasn't going to work, there you go. Or why doesn't this ever work for me? There you go. You didn't have any confidence at all. You were just hoping something would happen that didn't happen last time. In fact, we can do more harm by praying for people too quickly. In other words, they're not really in faith, they're in doubt. And if you pray for them in doubt and they pray a doubt prayer, they're not going to receive from God. And then what happens is it just reinforces their doubts. It reinforces the fact that when hands are laid on you, nothing happens. And that's not the direction we need to go. But I've found that especially Americans are pretty stubborn. And I've had people say, I'm not coming Tuesday night. I want you to pray. And they tell on me. They tell the pastor. And he'd come say, you know, they can't come to you. Would you please pray for them? And yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I will, but um, I, I would prefer 
you know, if the doctor said, take this for six weeks and come back and see me, you'd do it. But if the preacher says, sit for three services, we don't want to do that. We're busy. I mean, he works for us. Why don't he just pray for me right now? And, uh, you know, it, it's just a mentality. Brother Hagin used to say this, if you give me as much um, attention as you do the doctor, I'll get you healed. <laughs> if we just give the preacher as much time and effort as we give the doctor, we'd see much greater results. So, uh, you know, when we pray too quickly uh, before someone's in faith, you know, they're hoping that I'll bring the faith. But, th you know, there's, there's, there's something you need to bring to the table. The woman with the issue of blood kept saying, if I touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. And so uh, as I get people to say that, say, you know, Tuesday night, I'm going to get my healing. Tuesday night, when hands are laid on me, I'm going to receive. Then by the time you get to Tuesday night, I've had people get healed before I even got to them. Before I could even get to them, they get healed. I was in one prayer line one time, and I was praying for people, and I heard this scream. And this woman who was on the other end of the line, she jumped and, and she was waiting for me to pray for her. She screamed and ran around the church. And, you know, sometimes I'm not too sharp, but at, at a moment like that, I was able to say, what happened to you? I, I realized something happened. And I said, what happened? And she said, I was going to get surgery tomorrow. I'm scheduled for surgery for my ankle tomorrow. And I was standing in this line and she said, I, God healed me by his, he healed my ankle. And I said, well, walk up and down the steps. And she walked up and down the steps and stomped her ankle. She was totally healed. But, but we had, we had schooled people. We had let people do their homework. We had gotten these people into faith. And we saw, we saw so many things happen in that meeting. We saw so many instant healings. Your healing doesn't have to be instant, by the way. To be, to be real and to be of God. But we saw a lot of instant healings because people were ready. They were in faith. You can turn this around. It says here, let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea. Let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. Well, let's turn it around. Let's say that the man or woman prays in faith and they're not doubting and they're not like a wave of the sea. Let that person suppose they'll receive anything from God. In other words, you're going to get your answer. And if you'll believe, you can receive your answer. And so it really does work if we, uh, if we just identify unbelief. Hopefully this will help you because uh, I guarantee you the temptation for every Christian is to rush it and go get prayer. I want prayer now. And, and really, the prayer itself is not even important. It, it, the, what is important is that you're in faith. Mark eleven twenty three 23 doesn't even mention prayer. He says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. And then Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them. So you don't really even have to pray, but you do have to get in faith. And if we'd focus more on that, I believe we'd have better results. Does that make sense? Goodness, there are so many... There are so many things that I could do here. Let me bring out some instances of unbelief. See, well, you know, what does unbelief sound like? And, and there are several examples here. Or I'll give you three. But uh, when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and they're going across in the storm, they awoke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. There's unbelief right there. I encourage you to go through the Word of God and point out these examples of unbelief. Why? Because you need to get good at it. Man, if you, if you don't realize that you're in unbelief, if you don't realize when you've gotten over into doubt, if, it's, if you do it unconsciously, we need, to, we need to get sharp and recognize unbelief when it happens. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, you'll never get in unbelief or have any doubt ever again, but at least we need to know when we're doing it. So here you got the disciples who had a natural reaction to being on, aboard a sinking ship. Their reaction was, we're going to die. Well, that could all be true if Jesus hadn't said, let's go over to the other side. Once you have the word of God on it, you can't say, we're going to die. That's not what Jesus said. And so he was not happy with them. He pointed it out. 
And he said, you know, where's your faith? That's just, that is, that is not the response you needed to have. That was unbelief. All right. Then the man who brought his son to Jesus had the deaf and dumb spirit. And he made his plea. He said, Lord, if you can do anything, please have compassion on us and help us. That is a sincere prayer. It's touching. It, it, it's, the man was, was, was being totally transparent. But can I just tell you, that's unbelief. If you start a prayer to God Almighty with, if you can do anything, that's unbelief. You don't even have to go any further. That's unbelief. You open your prayer to God with something like this. God, you are the creator of heaven and earth. There is nothing you can't do. And then go from there. But to say, if you can do anything, that's just unbelief. And it didn't work. Jesus couldn't do anything in those, in, under those circumstances. He had to get that guy, that father, to believe. And that's what he said. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible. And so he had to identify and believe. And that's why that boy didn't get delivered. The disciples, there was, just, there was no faith there, and they didn't recognize it. They didn't know why the boy didn't get delivered. In fact, if Jesus hadn't walked up into that situation, this is in Mark chapter 9, if he hadn't walked up to that situation and explained it to him, they would have thought that maybe God didn't, didn't want to heal that boy. Maybe it wasn't God's will to deliver him, but that wasn't the case at all. There was unbelief that limited God in that situation and it limited God until it was removed. And thank God Jesus was able to do it. And then this is the obvious one in Numbers 13. Uh, the men, the, the ten spies who came back said, we are not able <laughs> to go up against the people for they're stronger than we. That directly contradicts what God said. He said, I'm giving you the land. Go possess the land. They said, we can't do it. That's unbelief. Say, well, they had a lot of facts on their side, yeah, but it's still unbelief because it contradicts what God said. Unbelief is, is believing anything that contradicts what God said, and we need to identify it, recognize it, and turn away from it because we can. We can refuse to believe anything that contradicts the Word of God. Amen. Well, I hope you're getting this. I'm telling you, I've got more teaching on faith. We're just going to have to do another series, and that's what the plan is. So uh, you, you don't, you've got to stay tuned in. We've got so much more teaching to go, but we're going to have one more session, and we're going to wrap up this teaching on You Have the Spirit of Faith. You don't want to miss it. Until then, remember this. The good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. To order your copy of this series, call our helpline at 918 918- 749-7744, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. I wanted to tell you about something we're doing on social media. Some of you have subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, and some of you are following us on Facebook. If you're not, we do a lot. We put a lot of effort into our YouTube channel. Go to Greg Fritz Ministries' YouTube channel and check it out. Many, many programs, I think close to 300 now, and then there are clips and other things. And then we do a lot of posts on Facebook. So we'd love to see you on Facebook, YouTube. Go check it out today.